Hello, and welcome to this second film about uh, the practical side of the Year 12 Acids and Bases course. Hopefully you've just watched the film about how to make a standard solution. This film is about the sort of substances that are good for making standard solutions. All right. In other words, things that we can keep on the shelf for a long period. All right. Now, what we'll see in this film is what exactly is meant by a primary standard and some features that we want primary standards to have. And we'll understand why certain substances that we might like to use as primary standards aren't very good. Okay, so um, there we go. What is a primary standard? This isn't really something that you have to be able to define in an exam, but it is good if you can come up with a few features that a primary standard should have. Or you might be able to explain why a certain substance isn't very good. Okay, so here are some things, these first two, these are things that we don't want our primary standard to be or to do. Okay, we don't want it to be hydroscopic. Hydroscopic is a word meaning it absorbs water from the atmosphere around it. Okay, so you might remember when we're making a standard solution, we want a solution of a precise concentration. So we want to we want to dissolve a precise number of moles of a substance in water. Okay, if we can't be sure how much water has been absorbed by the substance, then it's very difficult for us to know how much of it we're using when we make the solution. So that's that's a definitely an undesirable quality for a substance to have. Okay, deliquescent is actually quite similar in meaning to hydroscopic. Deliquescent means it will absorb water from the air around it. But the thing about deliquescent substances is they'll actually absorb so much water that they'll actually start dissolving in the water they've absorbed. Okay, so for example, sodium hydroxide pellets will end up just looking like liquid on your bench. Um, not because they've melted, but because they've absorbed so much water from the air that they've dissolved. Now, linked to those two properties, in a sense, is the fact that we do want our substance to be available in a very pure form. In other words, I want to be sure that when I go to the cupboard and pick up a jar of it, that that jar contains only that substance, not any water that's been absorbed, not any other substances that have been produced because my desired substance reacted with some gases around it. Okay, So we want it to be available in a pure form. We want it to be very stable. In other words, it's not going to fall apart and create other substances when I store it. Okay, So I don't want it decomposing in the cupboard. Okay, I also want it to have a high molar mass. Now we, we don't really need to be able to explain this in the exam, but let's have a quick look at why we want this. Okay. We are trying to get an exact number of moles into a flask when we make a standard solution. Right? We find out what mass we're going to use of a substance by multiplying the number of moles by its molar mass. Okay? Now, if I've got a balance that reads to 0 0.01 of a gram, and I have to weigh out 0 0.1 of a gram of a substance, then that's going to have a plus or minus 0 0.01 gram error. And that's actually quite a big error. That's 10%. Okay, If I have to weigh out 100 grams of the substance, then that error becomes very small. Okay, It's actually now down to, uh, what is it, uh, it's a uh, hundredth of a percent. Okay, one one hundredth of a percent. Okay, so simply by weighing out a large amount of substance, I will reduce the amount of error in my mass measurement. Okay, and the way to get a big mass of a substance if I know what number of moles I want to use of it, is to make sure that it's got quite a big molar mass. So the higher my molar mass is, the less error there will be in my mass measurements. Okay. Right. Moving on and having a look at some things which don't make good primary standards, but which we might think we'd like to make standard solutions from. Okay. Sodium hydroxide to begin with. Um, quite a lot of acid-base titrations use sodium hydroxide. Okay, um, but we can't really make a very good standard solution out of it because when we dissolve it in water, we can't be sure it's pure because sodium hydroxide is not only deliquescent, but it also reacts with carbon dioxide. In fact, in some biology experiments, we use sodium hydroxide to absorb all the carbon dioxide from the air. Okay, so in other words, I can't be sure what my jar of sodium hydroxide contains. It will contain mainly sodium hydroxide probably, but some of it will have reacted to produce other compounds. Okay, Hydrochloric acid, well, 
The thing is, once it's an acid, you've dissolved it in water. And even, I mean, well, first of all, the pure substance, hydrogen chloride, is a gas, so it's quite difficult to handle. Um, once I've dissolved it in just a tiny, tiny little bit of water and I've made concentrated hydrochloric acid, that is then a very hydroscopic liquid. Okay, It loves absorbing water from the air and will gradually become diluted. So in other words, it's very difficult for me to take some hydrochloric acid off the shelf and know exactly how much water's in the solution. All right, So it's difficult for me to make a solution, a standard solution, whose concentration I know exactly. Um, here's another example of something that doesn't make a good primary standard. It's more related to the redox topic, okay, so this isn't used in redox titrations, but the trouble with potassium manganate is it decomposes and it forms manganese dioxide, okay? So, in other words, once again, if I've got some potassium manganate solution, right, I've got a standard solution of it, it will gradually turn into MnO2. And so the longer it sits on the shelf, the less potassium manganate there will be in it, but it's very hard for me to measure how much there is left in it. Okay? So in other words, it's not good as a primary standard. A primary standard is something I want to be able to keep a bottle of and be sure that every time I use it, its concentration is a certain value. Okay? So moving on to some substances that are good primary standards, and we'll finish with these. It's actually become quite a long film. It's just really telling you what primary standards are and some examples of them. Okay, sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate is a good primary standard used in acid-base titrations because it reacts with acids. So we can titrate acids against it, and quite often we can standardize hydrochloric acid solutions by reacting in them with sodium carbonate solutions first okay so i can't have a standard solution of, of hydrogen chloride or uh, sorry of hydrochloric acid right but if i want to check the concentration of my hydrochloric acid i can use a standard solution of this to do that okay and then as long as i use my hydrochloric acid soon afterwards then i can be fairly confident its concentration hasn't changed too much and now these two these two are mainly used in redox okay k2 cr2 o7 in fact i could equally well use sodium dichromate it doesn't have to be potassium dichromate it's this dichromate ion that is an oxidizer and so it's used in redox titrations okay it's quite stable unlike potassium permanganate and also sodium oxalate which is Na2C2O4 and this one is kind of used in acid base titrations in the sense that um, oxalic acid C2O4H2 can be used in acid base titrations but normally we'll see this ion the oxalate ion being used in redox titrations Okay, well, um, that's about it for primary standards. Um, I don't really think there's that much in there to get confused by, but just in case you've got any questions, please feel free to comment on the YouTube or come in and ask in your own time.